Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, dude. You did awesome, man. You did fucking awesome. <laughs> Great job, man. Hey, whatever. <laughs> Thanks for being drop, here. Drop the bloopers up. Yeah, uh, yeah. The bloopers is getting dropped. I, I feel it. I feel yeah. it. Bloopers getting dropped. I, I'm, I'm, I can la- I can laugh at myself. What up? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm I'm Donnell. I'm Donnell. I think I'm Donnell. <laughs> AKA. D D the barber D the barber D the barber at at, at uh King Kingdom, at Kingdom, Cuts. Kingdom Cuts yeah he turned into uh, Martin on life man he said, <laughs> he said what's your name he said Claude that's my name <laughs> you gotta put that one right before it <laughs> yeah that's how we gonna do it. that's how we gonna do that one what up world it's your boy Trees Trump signing on screen and go get the money and welcome back to another episode of the Hot Seat Podcast where we're always putting a spotlight on small business owners entrepreneurs. Uh, Black-owned businesses, artists, musicians, uh, etc. in our community. Today, we have the honor of speaking with none other than my man, Donnell, a.k.a. D the Barber. He is a master barber. He is also an educator, as well as a shop owner. Welcome to the show today, my brother. You. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you know, if you ever seen any episode, man, the first, the way we started off, <laughs> the way we started off was one, one simple question, man, and that's who are you? So give us something about your background. Who man, are you? I'm Donnell. Um, I've been in Oceanside pretty much, this is now my 14 year stint. Um, I grew up here. My dad was a Marine. I left here at 14 after going to Carlsbad High School for a year, went to Valley Middle School, uh, Buena Vista Mil- Elementary in, in Carlsbad. Okay. Um, left from here and went to Louisiana, stayed uh, stayed out there, joined the military, came back out here at 27 after Hurricane Katrina. Oh, wow. And, um, you yeah, know, been here ever since. Wow. All right, well, I can't move on too fast. But <laughs> I need, I need some, I need some information about the okay. the the Hurricane Katrina thing, man. Like, because that's that's wild. You were tw- so you were twenty seven, though. Twenty seven. Okay. Um, after high school, what what was the move for you? What'd you do? Um, let's see. I left from here and I went to I went to my parents had divorced. Um, I lived out in I lived in Oceanside. My dad, you know. My dad was doing his thing, and I ended up leaving, going to stay with mom. And Louisiana was kind of a culture shock. Yeah. So it, when I got there, they was like, "Hey, look, you know, you, you're you're black, but you're not one of us. You don't talk like us, walk like us, dress like us. You're not one of us." Yeah. So I had to kind of fight for a mm. little bit to find myself and who I was. So it kind of shaped me into, in a different person. Wow. Um, decided to join the military, and because I really couldn't find me, I didn't know who I was. Um, which is something that I think change. we can all relate to. Right. A lot of people think, oh, yeah, you graduate high school, you know what you want to do, you're going to figure it out. No, it takes a while. Yeah. It yeah. takes it a takes while. It takes a long time. Yeah. You got you to gotta go through some stuff, mm-hmm. figure some stuff out. Um, yeah, man, I, I joined the military, got stationed in Heidelberg, Germany, um, stayed there and played football for, ooh, I was actually only in the military two years, nine months. Wow. So I got I got injured playing football. I dislocated my left leg from my hip. Um, <laughs> that don't sound good. Nah. So I have a I have a metal rod in my hip, and it's from that. Okay. Um, 2015, I was you know became a 100 percent disabled veteran. Wow. So, yep. Well, thank you for serving, man. Because Veterans Day was yesterday, yes, right? It was. Yes, it was. So big yes, salute to everybody that served, man. You know we're gonna definitely you. do that. Um, so hurricane hurricane Katrina hits and and it and it pushes a lot of people out yeah. obviously yeah and you come back to Cali um they actually so I ended up getting on a bus and the bus was you got to basically pick where you wanted to go they were sending them east coast they were sending them west coast they were sending them to California I was like you know what? let me go back somewhere where I know some people I can probably move you know my dad was you know welcoming me with open arms saying hey look come on back mm-hmm. and. That was away, mm-hmm. so left there and came back out here and stayed in a hotel for six months. Yeah, <laughs> ruined my credit, messed some stuff up. Yeah, um, ended up getting a ho- getting out of the hotel. The VA was giving not the VA the um, 
FEMA was given vouchers. Okay. For uh, for apartments at the time. Okay. They said that you can go get an apartment if you had this this form. Yeah, I, I, I remember hearing something I about ended up that. Going to a hotel, or I ended up going to an apartment with the form, got the apartment, and three months later, they was looking for their money. Mm. And if there was a female was like, yeah, we we're out of resources. We don't know what to do. Out of resources, we can't pay this. So you got I, to stay there for three eviction. months, and you got evicted. I got evicted. Before I get evicted, I took the form and went to another place in Oceanside. Mm-hmm. Left from Ocean and and got there. Stayed there for three months, and they was like, "Where's our money?" Doing it again. Evicted twice in the same year. Wow. Twice in the same year. It was basically staying out of the shop that I was working in at the time. Okay, you 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 made it through. You made it through that. What when did you start? Okay, so you're a barber at this point already. I was a barber at this point. So, okay, yeah. So let let's get back. into that because how'd you become a barber? <sighs> okay, so originally at 14, my mom, right before I left here, my mom was like, "Hey, you're gonna go. I'm gonna give you these pair of clippers because I'm not going back to a barber shop. They treat me like a piece of meat. Mm. They look at me in there and I I, I just feel the eyes." said, you know what, here, figure it out. And at the time, I was staying in Chula Vista right before we left. And um, I started basically, I tried, tried to fade myself. Yeah. Like, cut it off, because it was 92, Jordan's big. Yeah. Like, I'll just go with the body. Go with the body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go with the body. And that, that kind of, you know, I learned. I learned mm-hmm. it myself, started cutting my friends. Um, after we moved, I started, you know, my idol, one of my, I can't say idols, but a big OG that I knew, he was one of my cousins. He was working out of his house, at, you know, because you live in Louisiana where I was at the time. It was the country. It's like Thibodeau, Louisiana, a little small town. You got maybe uh, 300 people in graduating classes. Mm. Um, Jeez. So I was cutting in the neighborhood, you know, just go in there and kind of learn. I'd watch. And I had my own clippers. I was only cutting my own hair. And then as I got better, started cutting my cousins. Yeah. Started cutting my uh, my friends. Yeah. And took it with me to the military, cutting the barracks. Uh, it paid for a lot of stuff. You know, I, I was able to save my money and not go out on the weekends. Mm-hmm. So I was able to save a whole bunch of money that way. And it kind of helped me grow. Um, kept me out of a lot of trouble. It always gave me interest in something to do. Okay. I knew I could fall back on something. Yeah, because having that craft is important. Having the now, craft is huge. Well, to me, to me, what it sounds like, and and this is one thing, like in the shop that I started at and everything, you know, shout out to Mister Washington. Mm-hmm. He used to call that a hair cutter, mm-hmm. not a barber, right? Not a barber, because you don't have a license yet. Correct. So when did you decide to go in legit? When did that transition happen? That's, that's actually a long story. <laughs> a long story. <laughs> but I, I, I cut it down, right? Okay. So okay. And after Hurricane Katrina, I come here and I was working for a, a, some electronics company. It was over on Vista Way and I used to get, get on the bus, go over there um, and get a haircut. But one day I walked in with a pair of Walmart clippers mm-hmm. with the with the with the cord that's not uh, that you can't the, not the big cord it's yeah. the regular home cord yeah yeah and I walked in I walked up to LJ and he was like yo I said yo can I um I can cut hair how can I get a job he was like you can cut hair I said yeah I said well he said where are you from I said I'm from New Orleans I just got here maybe you know six months ago I've been trying to you know. I know I can do this. Mm-hmm. Just give me a chance. He said, look, you hear from Hurricane Katrina, I'll give you a chance. And that's wow. I didn't. So shout out to LJ. AK, to LJ. Hey, that's Lil James, if you yeah. don't know. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, when I was the side's finest, you know what I mean? So, he had, yeah. He had, he had owned the shop. And I just, you know, he, got, he brought me in. Man, the dude made me cut afros for the first six months I was there. I couldn't cut nothing but afros. He was like, yo, you can figure out an afro. It's gonna give you everything you need to learn about cutting hair. You're gonna get small taper, you're gonna get, you know, C strokes, you go yeah. you go you gonna have to figure it out. Yeah. And for six months I did that and he just helped me to grow. Um, they brought me in and kept me there. Um, shit. That ended up closing because something happened with 
I don't know what. I wasn't part of it. wasn't there. I mean, we ain't happened. even going to discuss it, man. <laughs> I don't know either. I ended up working up working up in Oceanside and left Oceanside. I stayed there for like two, three months and got into it with the owner because I didn't have a license, but I said I had a license. Mm. Brought him in a fake form, said it was a license. He was like, yeah, nah. That ain't um, it. Then my homeboy, Xavier, I don't know if you know X, Xavier Douglas. I think I do. He was uh, he owned De Capelli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Side. I worked there with LJ and Tyson and or Tyson the Barber. Worked there with all them for a while. Um, then took five years off after I had a hip, had a hip replacement. Okay. So from 2015 to 2020, I wasn't cutting. Wow, so you made like the the, the come you made a comeback. comeback. Yeah. That's wow. That's wow. Okay, so you take five years away from barber. Mm -hmm. Um hip replacement. Yeah. So let's talk about that transition uh from from the hip replacement and the five year gap. What was going on there? Well, in that five year gap, I got to just kind of decide because I wanted, wanted to see what it was like not having to work, not having to get up. I was, you know, the VA um, gave me a hundred percent disability mm -hmm. and I was able to live. You know, I was able to it kind of change things. They gave me a whole bunch of back pay. I got, to, you know, pay off some debt, mm -hmm. you know, and have a little bit of money in my pocket. And it kind of helped me to, I thought that I could kind of do it without. And five years of doing nothing kind of made me realize you know, I, I love barbering. Mm -hmm. And when I went to go actually cut hair, um, all my friends were like, hey, I need you with a license. I need you to have a license to work here. You know, that was prior to this. Mm -hmm. You could do it. Yeah, you can kind of get yeah. Yeah. 15, Basically 15 years down here without having a license and cutting yeah. in the shop because yeah. and my, my talents got me through. Allegedly. 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 I was cutting it. <laughs> um, but then I decided in 20, let's see, 2019 that I wanted to go to barber school, you know, and I started in February and everything, I take that back, I started in December and in, by February everything shut down. I just got out of the classroom, ready to hit the floor, and as soon yeah. as I hit the floor, no more cutting hair. But because I was, I had been cutting, mm -hmm. um... The actual instructor or the owners are like, hey, if you can cut and you can do this, you can actually help us teach. You've been doing this this long. You can help us teach online. Mm. So I was teaching as I was going to school. And um, once I got out of school, um, they asked me to come be an educator. And I did that for two years. Not to cut you off, but they say that's when you truly mastered your craft, when you could teach. Yeah. So I respect yeah. I respect you being I mean because you did have fifteen years of experience right license right. or no license you had that right. experience right. and to be able to use it and kind of give back mm -hmm. uh, at the same time of legitimizing yourself is is dope that's excellent man I like it so keep on going man from um, there what 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 happens from there I end up finishing up with school and was educating and working at um, East to West Cuts. Um, Shout out to Manny. Yeah, shout out to shout Manny. Shout out to man. Manny. Um, he has he had a lot of chairs, and we had known each other for a while. Um, and we just he brought me in. I told him I wasn't gonna be there for long, but yeah, hey, I wanted to build and grow, and and you know, see if there was something that I wanted to do again. Right, and right. As I as I went through, I felt myself building and growing, and the hunger to want more and want my own just kind of came, you know, I yeah. wanted to, didn't want to work necessarily for him. I didn't necessarily care for a lot of things in a lot of shops. And I wanted to change that for me mm -hmm. and be able to show my own product. And that was my, um, my goal, my ambition that would kind of set me say, Hey, look, you know what, let's do it my way. I think that's the upside too, of kind of experiencing multiple shops before you, make a decision like that because you kind of get to see what people are doing that works mm -hmm. what people are doing that doesn't work and kind of create your own brand off of that and or know? what works for you yeah and what works for you obviously yeah. that's the yeah. number one thing so um that's when you decided to open open your own open spot own. yeah okay I so already, we, i had already been with the name kingdom cuts i had already camped with the name just kind of was like uh what 
I, if I opened up a shop, it'd be named Kingdom Cuts. How'd you come with that? Um, <laughs> the name was just because Kingdom, I think, you know, hey, look, the world is our kingdom. I think we're strong, powerful, and confident individuals. Mm -hmm. And what the one thing that I could, you know, relate that to was um, a lion and a tiger. And those lion and tiger represent confidence and strength. Um, and king of the jungle. And the king of the jungle. King of the jungle and king of the Sahara in their respective areas. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so for me, when a man comes into the kingdom, kingdom cuts, mm -hmm. he feels he's not so powerful, confident, and strong feeling. But when you, once you finish with your haircut, you come out feeling like royalty. You know, and that's what the fleur de lis symbolizes to me. It's royalty. Dope. Um, it's not necessarily a saint symbol, and everybody sees it as such. Yeah, yeah. Saint, well, look, yeah, because you know Louisiana, from, the saints, Louisiana yeah, yeah. or having been there for so long, and that being my roots. Yeah. Um, and then the lion and tiger just represent strength and power. So when you, once you leave after your haircut, you know you feel powerful, strong, confident as you you know go forward to your day to roam your respective kingdom. That's deep. Like you got you put a lot of thought into that concept, man. I really I really like that. And then what also what you put a lot into is your shop. All right, now talk to talk to me about transitioning from east to west um and deciding hey i'm gonna get this shop obviously you got the name you got the logo how does it work somebody out there that's listening in right now that wants to get a shop how did the process work for you oh um i had i had to do a lot of research a lot of background try to figure out you know what it what it was that um, I wanted what direction I wanted to go. Um, if I wanted a concept, what if I wanted it to be a, a commission shop, a blueprint shop? Mm -hmm. um, once I, I always thought I wanted to empower, you know, the next barber, the to be their own shop owner, to want to be that um, that leader. And the one reason that I, I chose being a booth renter was because I could not necessarily influence but show someone the way mm. you know and guide them on their path like hey look you know what this and teach them that this is what this is your shop that you work in right. you know i want you know barbers to know that when they come into my shop if they choose to work with me that they're working with me not for me you know we're working together and that's to get to one common goal right you know, i don't i want to you know kind of be that that place where you know not necessarily the, the turnover is high but the turnover and the 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 growth from it is right. high, you right. know, because everybody needs a foundation. You start somewhere, you learn something, you see something that somebody can teach or give you that promotes you or pushes you to the next level right. you know, of your career. And I want to be, you know, not necessarily the stepping stone, but the stepping stone. Yeah, you know, part of that process. That you know? Yeah. Like little James did for you Absolutely. in so many words. Absolutely. Little okay. James, Manny, you know. Yeah, Manny as well. You know, Xavier. You know, we did, we did, it's, it's seeing that and understanding that everybody's in a different place in their life, you know. Yeah. Not everybody wants to be a shop owner. Yeah. Not everybody wants to, to um, be there every day. Yeah. You know, there is that, that, that balance of, or finding that balance of, you know, common ground on whether people want to be there all the time and or not. Um, and that's, that's a hard part of ownership. Right. So you go out, you find this location, right? How, how'd you, how'd you find the location? Um, I really hadn't found the location. Um, like I, I was going to open up a shop after I left from East to West in May of 2022. And, um, I got an offer from someone to go open up a shop or help change a shop from a commission shop down in Oceanside to a booth rent shop. Um, that had a similar structure, or some, not really structure, but similar design to what I have now. Mm -hmm. And um, went in, got that done, changed it. It worked for about a month. Um, right after that month, we didn't see eye to eye anymore. So uh, we terminated our contract with each other, our partnership, and I went my own way. And 
it just so happens, you know, God is good um, all the time, matter yeah. of fact. That's so, what I'm going to um, say all the time. If all you the don't time. know that part. Then, all the time. Yeah, right. Um, yep. But I ended up being offered another spot a week later wow. know, to, a, um, to a shop in Vista. And I ended up cutting out of my garage for nine months, six months, six months, seven months. So you didn't find a location. The location, the location found you. The location found me. That's dope. Okay. So now you got the location, right? Mm-hmm. And, and talk to us about the process, man. Like, what's going on, man? You got to have chairs. Hey, you know, give us the whole rundown, man. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to know how it works. Let me see. the up. chair, I mean, you got the gold chairs. Listen, uh, there's, there's. You're looking real royal in there. I was blessed with, with incredible people. You know, um, I was offered something called a. Uh, Opportunity Zone project. So the owner of my building got a grant to um, what is it? to to build out a barbershop. Mm-hmm. Um, just told me, hey, look, pick out everything you want. You got to go through the design. You got to tell me what it is that you like, what you want. We went through talking about what we wanted on the walls and how we wanted the walls done, and. Um, <laughs> I didn't have to come out of pocket at all. What? Not at all. Yo. <laughs> I was blessed. Are you guys really hearing this, blessed. guys? Because, I mean, and you know what? And it looks like it in there. Yeah. It looks yeah. like it because I was like, man, them chairs you got? I, 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 was, I was really blessed. When I say You I, got this logo right here is painted on this wall, but it's two walls and it has a yeah. gap in between. Y'all got to see this, man. Yeah. I mean, Come it's beautiful, in. man. It is. Thank you. Vista, California. Give them the address one time while we talk about it. 101 South Coast Highway. I mean, I'm sorry. 101 um, South Indiana Avenue. Okay. Vista, yeah, 101 yeah. South right. Indiana Avenue. 101 South Indiana Avenue. Come check us out. We are on the corner. Um... We're only one one spot in the building across from us is a big old parking lot. Come on. Yeah. Come okay. On. So um you got the you got the build out. You got to pick anything. And that had anything to feel like a kid man. in the candy store, huh? Man, I went and looked saw too much. Right. I saw too much. My ambi- man, my ambitions was this big. And then I had yeah. to get shrunk down. You know, I was like, yeah. I really had to see you've only got five hundred and seventy seven square feet. Yeah. There's only so what much you, you can do with this. In, right, right. You know, but you want to make a statement. Mm-hmm. And um, I ended up calling up. I got to I got to go around to go see different things that I wanted on walls because we initially we were talking about putting a big old tiger, just mm-hmm. one tiger. Mm-hmm. And um, after the tiger, I was like, you know what? I, I talked to this dude. His name's BB. Shout out to BB. Um, he was the graphic designer that put the, the art on the wall. Yeah, we could drop his ass too. So we'll get yes, those sir. for I you. Told him, I told him exactly what I wanted. I said I want a lion and a tiger, and I want a fleur de lis. And I showed him the picture of the logo. That's the symbol called. What's that symbol called again? Fleur, Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis. Okay, yeah. Fleur I just de Lis. say the same symbol too. <laughs> I need to learn something. It's today. a French flower. It's yeah, a French, French flower. flower. So, anyway. so nicely. All right, cool. It, um, beyond my expectation, this dude, I talked to him. He said, hey, I can do it. It's not my thing, but I can do it. It's mm-hmm. like, yo, know, for what I want on the wall, I want this to be a statement. When you look in here... I gave him the color palette. Yeah. He was like, hey, I can do it. Um, beyond, everything beyond my expectation, anything I could ever thought he was going to do, he did it. Wow. Did it. It, it's amazing. But yeah, I got to pick out you know, everything, the whole build out. I had to, you know, the, from the lighting to the, um, the stations, um, the mirrors. You know, the mirrors took a minute. Yeah. Was- That's amazing, man. That is amazing. You blessed. You got blessed with that. That's that's big. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. Okay, so now you got this beautiful shop. You got your name. You got your logo. Mm-hmm. You got your chairs. The light. Everything is exactly okay. how you want it. Okay. Now let's talk about the process of like finding bar- the right barbers okay. uh, uh, to f- to fill fill those chairs. Okay. Um, originally, I went in with two barbers. Oh, so you already had two. I had two. Okay. Um, and. They were great, you know. It it was. I I really want a diverse barbershop, mm-hmm. you know. I, I so I, although I have a lot of 
I have a lot of Mexican clientele. I have a lot of white clientele. I have a lot of black clientele. So, but I had a, about 250 clients of my own going into the shop. Okay. And um, I was booked. I was full every day. I ridiculous. Right. But now I had to figure out how to get more people and show them the way. Mm -hmm. um, those barbers that I had, they, you know, they didn't see my vision. And um, shout out to them. They're doing their thing. I, you know, everybody's everybody learns what they're what they're going through. But as a shop owner, you got to at some point you got to make decisions sometimes that you don't want to, but it's for the better of your business. Mm -hmm. And you know, friends and businesses a lot of times they don't get along. You yeah. Know, you you can't go into business being a friend, and because you got to realize that it's your business that we're in business to make money. Yeah. You know? So you have to make executive decisions for your business and everybody doesn't have the same vision right um accepting that is is one thing and you know one of my barbers was closing early you know um right before right after we opened up so we opened up november 1st of 2022 um my birthday speaking <laughs> of which so yes happy belated i'll birthday, never right? forget your anniversary again <laughs> man <laughs> I bring you a flute de loop with a de loop bring you with a fly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, it didn't work out, but you know, they're doing well. You know, I I respect their decisions and think they did. Um I was in the shop and had gone through to different schools to go, you know, talk to different people. And it just so happens one guy that I walked in one day to West Coast Barber College mm -hmm. and um a guy Antoine, he asked me, Antoine, or Blends by G, he asked me, he said, hey, look, you know, I'm going to work for you. I'm going to work for you. I said, what? He said, yeah, I'm going to work in your shop after my whole spiel, because I don't, I usually don't go into schools teaching um, how to cut hair, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, I, everybody does that. So I'll go into school and I'll, I'll do a finance class just because I want them to understand there's a, there, it is a business. Yes, there's yeah. a business side of this. Instead, I think it's, hearing it from a that's, barber, too, that's big. You know, that's um, big. I try to, you know, just give them some guidance early on. And after, after he talked to me, he said, <laughs> "I said, look, I'm gonna need you to come in and do a do an interview. Show me how you cut hair. This, that, the other." He's like, "I can do that right now." He walks me over to the chair, does a haircut. I look at it. It's okay. Yeah. Not trying to give him no props in the yeah, hey, yeah, 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 good yeah, job, right? Yeah. So um, later on, I leave the shop and he hits me up. It's like, yo, what's the deal? And um, So, I mean, he was adamant about yeah. it. And I was adamant about people coming in with licenses. And un he ended up working for me and getting his license within a week. Mm. You know, and he's been there ever since. Wow. Um, so that was probably your first, that was your first solid. That was the first solid. Per, per, uh, portion of the team. Like yeah. the, the yeah. one person that you knew, like, okay, yeah, I got one. Yeah. It's, it's Christmas of 2022. And um, I had let go of the two other barbers right before he came in. Um, so I was in the shop for about a week by myself. Mm -hmm. And I ended up having a call. I'm like, look, I, I know I told you I need you with a license. He was like, look, well, I got my license test next week. Mm. Can, you, can you come in? I'm like, look, can you come in? Can, I, I need some help. I need some help. I can't, I can't do this by myself. I'm burning out. Yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. I just need some help. Maybe you could just pick up the walk-ins. If, if somebody else can take some of this load off me, yeah. I'm a man. It'd be great. So, and you know what? That, you know, when you open a shop, it is a blessing to be established to the point where you do need help. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not like you open in this shop. Some people open a shop. They ain't got no clientele. They, right. they build this beautiful shop, yes. put all this money into it, and then they got to go find people that are eligible to work with them or fill those seats. Or they can't even... Some people don't even got a license. They just doing the shop, doing and they want to try to find barbers that's going to mm -hmm. do it for them or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. So you're in a total other end of that so you, to the point where you got to get this guy and he comes in he's doing well he's still there mm -hmm. and then you just start building because how many chairs you got in your shop I have five chairs okay five chairs five chairs they're all full now no no I'm still, okay so I'm you still have a chair open okay um i was so i have he's now part-time 
Okay. Um, but I I brought in another barber, um, Rashad. Okay. And he was from uh, he was working in Point Loma, moved to Vista. Okay. And wanted to work closer to home, and I took on an, a female. Okay. Um, Stephanie, and we've been building. We're nice. all building. Just help them all build and grow. Yes, and, sir. You know, yes, sir. Trying to show them what I know, not necessarily make them another me, but show them what I know so yeah. they can. You know, take whatever skills that they can from not only me but each other, and build a business. You know? Now, um, Offset, we was talking about. You know, one of the things that you were saying is most important to you as being a shop owner is being able to educate mm -hmm. um, the people that your team. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really huge on you know education. So, yeah, talk to us. Teaching us. Yeah, how to, talk to us about some of the things that you're educating them on. Um, that you probably don't, I mean, because honestly, as a barber and I, a big shout out to Mr. Washington, cause he did bring like life insurance people in for mm -hmm. us or, you know, educators on different things, but that's not happening at every shop. Right. And Mr. Washington right. is an educator like yourself. Yeah. So, I mean, I would expect that kind of from him, mm -hmm. but for those barbers that kind of just got their license and just been cutting and just making money and they don't really know, you know, because we don't have no retirement plan. Right. Right. We don't have none of this stuff that normal jobs, 401k and all this. Right. Stuff. We have right. to know and educate ourselves on that stuff. Right. You know, don't right. come like you don't get benefits with as a barber and you don't just walk in and clock in and start getting paid. Right. Like you can't just sit in the shop for 10 hours, not cutting and get paid. Yeah. So like talk to us about how you've been or what areas you've been educating your, your barbers in. Well, a lot of barbers, first off, they don't know that once they... They don't know both sides. They don't know the, the, the commission and the booth rent. You know, they don't take the time to educate themselves on what they are supposed to be getting when they are in a commission shop or mm -hmm. versus a booth rent shop. And I try to educate them and let them know that they, you know, you really just, it's all there at your, at your fingertips. Barber State Board or, or um, the state of California has rules you mm -hmm. know, that what barbershop owners should give you on both. And as a as I had to make that decision to be booth rent because one I I can't afford <laughs> you know I don't have the, the ability to give everybody you know a four hundred one k and you know this mm -hmm. that the other um, which is supposed to be given to you but it's teaching each one how to understand you know how to put it into work themselves um, looking at you know, have have my fiance come in and give them education classes on finance and taxes, all that stuff. Yeah, man, that's that. Back in the day, I don't think no barbers was doing that. They right. was just uh, cash only, right? I, <laughs> right. But it's teaching them it's, it's a business. Mm -hmm. You know, your, mm -hmm. your shops, your shop. Just because you work within a shop, yeah. doesn't mean that, that shop's your business. Right. I get it as an owner that that shop is my business. Mm -hmm. But each barber should understand that where they work. Yeah, especially when you say something like rent, yeah, booth rent, booth meaning rent. you're renting a space within this yeah. business, and that is yours. Yours, that's your. You have business. to think of it that way too, and and you have to run it that way. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think um, it gets really hard because people don't. Us barbers, we get you so used to hey, look at the money, the money, the money. Mm -hmm. You know, and we we'll take and put that money up under our. Up under our bed, mm -hmm. you know, put it in a shoebox, shoe box. and not really understand. They look, you know, you got to show some of this. Yeah, because when it's time to, to go get a car, it's house. time to go get a house, or whatever the case may be, the bank want to see that yeah. income being mm -hmm. deposited into the bank. Mm -hmm. They don't know nothing about no shoebox. They don't care about the shoebox. They don't care about the Where you get box. that money from? Yeah, you get real questionable. 20, you go to put 20, 30 Gs on a house, and they be like, uh, we're, all cash. You got to tax that. Yeah. <laughs> you got to tax that. You didn't get, Uncle Sam didn't uh, get none of that. None of it. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's... You know, I think it's, but it's more than teaching them just finance, though. Yeah. It's also teaching them, you know, how to, how to, you know, keep a client, how to treat a customer when they come in, how to greet them, you know, how to go out and go, what I call go fishing, mm -hmm. is go and hand out business cards. Yeah. You know, teaching them that, hey, look, you got to promote yourself. You That's know, key, too, to, man. In order to get the followers, the vision. And it works. Yeah, it works. It, it works. works, man. I'm telling you. But old school works, too. You know, everywhere you go, everybody you know should know you're a barber. Everybody yeah. you know. Yeah. Why? Because you never know. Yeah. You never know who you come in contact with. You never know who you end up having the opportunity to cut. You got to stay ready. Yeah. You stay you ready. Stay you ain't got to get ready. You ain't got to get ready. You know? It's it's hard work being a barber. 
And I think a lot of times we get into it thinking that we're going to do our own thing. You know, right. this is this man, I could take off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You know, I, I could be there Saturday, Sunday. And no, nah, but you got to take that. You can't, you can't, and you can't, you can. but you, you are can. not going to get where you think you get. But how, if you want to do that, mm -hmm. you have to go through the, the building the clientele mm -hmm. to keep you that busy on those days because you have realistically you have to have a number that you want to reach per week i'm okay. telling you and not yeah. only that but clients they're looking for consistency yes sir yes sir clients are looking for consistency looking they rely for consistency. on us and that's what people don't understand they rely on us like none other like well you, you, somebody about, will hit you up on thanksgiving like yo man you cutting today yeah they don't expect you to celebrate no holidays no. they don't give it they don't care about none of that no, they want you are to you available Mm -hmm. And you know that's a big sacrifice that we make as barbers, man. It is, it you is. know. So, big salute to that, man. It's big hard. It's hard. It's really hard to to try to, and you can't, you can't necessarily show teach somebody that without showing them. Right. You know, you got to be there in the trenches with them. You know, as an owner, I'm there in the trenches with them, trying to, hey, look, yeah, we gotta, we, we get this. Yep. You know, I'm fine. Busy. I ain't had lunch either, so mm -hmm. let's keep going. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, it be like that sometimes. Yeah. You got to get it when it's coming, though. You got to get it. Because on them slow days, we be like this. Like, ah. yeah. You be in there yeah. pulling your thumb like, yeah. hey, I sure wish I was I busy. Think, I think so. I already had lunch. <laughs> yeah. I think social media kind of glorified it too much to mm -hmm. the point where, hey, look, you know, sometimes we don't understand the grind. Yeah. You know? And you can do, I think there's a happy medium of, of both. You know, being able to do what you do, but also being able, you know, having to show that grind. Yeah. You know, the every day, the in yeah. and out. You know, we all trans full transparency. Yeah. You need to know what both sides look like, mm -hmm. not just the pockets fat. Oh, I right. had 15, 20 clients today, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. But nah, just I ain't have lunch today. I have lunch. I've been here since seven a.m. Man, my girl packs me lunch. Stand up, my my back hurt. Yeah, I pack a lunch. Pack and a that's lunch. hey, pack that's a lunch. main tip. If you a new barber, pack a lunch. Pack your lunch. Because every time you leave, guess what? You're happens? missing a client and Nobody you're spending show. money that you shouldn't be spending. I'm telling you, pack your lunch, man. It's just one key tip. You already spent right the money. Right there. Right you there. You already spend the money on lunch. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into it because this is me. Yep. <laughs> I appreciate you having me here. Yes, sir. On, on the hot seat. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to bring, we brought you a sweatshirt. You, you, you came with gifts. Sweatshirt. You came with gifts. Go ahead and run it, man. Yes, sir. Okay. Stickers are dope. You know what I'm saying? When he showed up. <laughs> I'm, digging, I'm digging the hoodie, too. It's because it's hoodie season right now. Yeah, it's hoodie season. It's hoodie season. Check it out. Kingdom Cuts. You got the lion and the tiger. And the what yes, was sir. the flower called? One more time. The Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis. Fleur de Lis. <laughs> now, this is what I like most, man. Look how he hit him with the, the QR code on the back. That's how you promote right there, man. I appreciate that, brother. I appreciate that for sure. sure. Now, um, I'm definitely gonna be rocking that one. You know. Uh community. So, you know, uh one thing about this podcast is it that's what it's about. It's about community, you know what I mean? Putting putting a spotlight on our community, mm -hmm. supporting one another, uh elevating, um, motivating, inspiring one another, you know, that's what we're about. And that's very important to you. I could see, you know, you're creating a community just of just outside of your clientele, of course, but inside of your barbershop, if there's a community, you Absolutely. know what I mean, where you're educating and you, you care about their well-being outside of just do they have their booth rent each yeah. week, you know what I mean? So let's get into community and t talk to me about how important that is to you and, and what's going on with you in the community. Man, community is huge to me. Um, not just in the area that I'm at, but everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I do a lot of. I try to do a couple times a year, um, especially last year. I think I did two or three. Um, we went to different communities, um, went to Long Beach, and did a um, two events where they do free haircuts. And, uh, okay. A friend of mine owns a nonprofit, and I partner up with him and go down and do his events. Um, I also partner with, partner with uh, DJ. I don't know if you know you know DJ. DJ. Um, Man, I be feeling. I, I'm just gonna guy. say yeah because if I say no, I'm gonna feel bad. He gonna be like, oh, so you don't know me now, huh? 
he does a backpack giveaway in Oceanside. And okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Giveaway. Okay. Um. So I partner. Y'all tap in, man. Hit me up. I'm down to come down there and do that too. That's what's up. Cause yeah, we, we actually do it. I done it with him last the last two three years. Yeah. Let and me like, in on it. Let me in on that. Put it, go out there and. You know, yeah. Do haircuts for the kids. Yeah. The free ones and. Get them ready for school. It's usually around July. Yeah. Um, July, August, right before they go back to school. And then during Christmas, he does a uh, a shoe drive. Okay. And I help him with the shoe drive. Okay. It's down here in Oceanside. And then in you know Long Beach, when events come up there, I go down there and do that as well. Yeah. Um, if there's any other events that I can get, you know, be a part of or help with, I try to as much as I possibly can. So um, anything I can do. Yeah. So my man is definitely not just in the shop making money. He's giving back yes, to not only his community, but other communities as well, man. Yes, sir. That's, that's fire. It's all that's part fire. of the kingdom. <laughs> yeah, it's you're right. You're right. It's all, it's you, all keep it, you, keep, you keep it going, man. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Okay, so uh, let's get your ads. And then also tell us about, um, because, I mean, obviously, the number one thing we want to gain from this podcast is some support. Yeah. So anybody out there in Vista, California, Oceanside, surrounding areas that's looking for a barber that want to slide up to Kingdom Cuts, how does that process work? You say you had your own app, or um, actually we have our own app. Okay. But um, if you want to get you know be a part of Kingdom Cuts itself, you know that that's as easy as a as an interview. You know, give me a call, um, or shoot him a D, shoot me a DM. Yeah. Right? Um, and that's at uh, if you could. Hit the DM at, at Kingdom Cuts on Instagram, um, or you can send an email. You can send or Kingdom, I'm sorry, Kingdom Dot Cuts on Instagram, um, and that's for the shop. Kingdom underscore Cuts is me. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. It's You're one kingdom, one kingdom underscore, underscore cuts. Underscore cuts. Don't worry, we're gonna have all one this in the link under- link below. Don't worry about it. You don't know his link, right? but I no. get you. I get it for you. There's Don't two, worry about they're it. They're so similar. Yeah. Uh, one Kingdom dot cuts is a shop. One Kingdom underscore cuts is is actually me. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I'm taking applications for you know the actual open chair. Okay. And we'll see. You know, hopefully, you know, the right person comes along and we can find what works for us. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, people that are looking to get a cut or looking to get one of your services, okay. how do they do that? They actually, you can, there are three ways. You can, we, on our cards, you can scan our QR code. Actually, on the back of your jacket, that that brings you to. Bring that back up for y'all right there. That brings you, you know, actually to so our You booking. might be able to get it right here. <laughs> that brings you to our booking app. And that app is our app. It's in your app store. Um, Google and Apple under Kingdom Cuts. Okay. Um, you'll be able to find it. You'll see it on some apps it's a picture of me um you just click download and you can pick your barber that's on there and okay you know so you, when you go on search. there it shows it gives each barber's, each barber's uh, information, information and everything there as well yeah that's dope i like that man because you know i'm on the cut app so having your own app is that you you like that better i actually do yeah it's, you know what it's it's a it's a <laughs> I called it some shock factor or wow factor. Mm-hmm. I mean, you talk to a customer, you're like, hey, look, you know, I'm not on the cut. I'm on my own app. Right. Um, especially when people, you know, the, so what I didn't like about, not to say what I didn't like, what I wanted to um, to take away from actually being on the cut app or any other app, Booksy, I didn't want to, when you're booked, that customer is actually sent elsewhere. They're offered other people's services in your area. Are they? They're offered other people's services. See, I ain't know that. So that's crazy. Of having that, I wanted. Shout out to my clients for being loyal. That part. They be coming back part. with the afro. I'm like, you think you did, but you ain't get no cut no else. Love y'all, man. <laughs> VIPs, man. They be talking about celebrity Absolute, cuts and man. celebrity. Oh, I'm a celebrity barber. My clients that come in every week, those is the celebrities those are the right there. Yes, sir. Straight up, yes, man. Sir. I love y'all. Y'all help me pay my bills, support my family. <laughs> those are my celebrities. You know what I mean? The other ones, man, they come a dime a dozen, man. Y'all, far in between, man. I love right. it. Yes, yeah. sir. So, um, got your own app. That's how they book it. You said there was three options. Yes, so, options. so you got the QR, QR code. code, you got the webs, the website. The, okay. And you can find it on our website. It's kingdomcutsvista.com. Okay. Um, or you can be right on Google and hit the book an appointment. 
There it is. You know, my man. That's that's easy. It's easy as a yeah, yeah. You, you're a click away. You're a click yeah. away, man. Uh, you know what? We usually do a shout out each week, man. You know what? I got to shout out my family this week, man. My mom, my dad, and my sister, man. Uh, my dad being Chi Town. What? What is? What is his name? His name is Mel Chi Town, Fifty Eighth Street. <laughs> oh, on oh, oh, uh, Instagram. My mom is the foodie diva. Check her out. She just graduated culinary arts school. Been cooking her whole life. She's crazy with it. We got some stuff coming soon. <laughs> And none other but my sister, Amazon Monroe. Um, this past year, man, you know, it's been a building and a learning process for me. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when it all boils down to it, they've been in my corner like a thousand percent, man, that, to help me get through whatever it was, the ups, the downs, mm-hmm. you know, and they've been very supportive. So I just want to take a moment to shout out them. You know what I mean? I love y'all like a fat kid loves cake. You know what I'm saying? Right. And big salute to y'all, man. And uh, man, we got to come up with a quote of the day, man. I know you got something, man. man. The kingdom. Let's look up some kingdom. Did you find one? Well, a couple. Go get it. Get it. Okay, quote of the day. We got to do one more shout out first. Shout out to your fiance for taking the time to get uh, Listen, the quote out. together. Listen, you know right, every good man uh-huh. is a powerful woman. Mmm. Listen to me. Mm. Every good man is a powerful woman. Without her being able to do what she does or doing what she does, mm-hmm. I'm not able to do what I do. Wow. You know, she she helps me stay grounded. You know? Yeah. Um, everything that I do, it almost depends on her. Mm. You know, being able to work in the shop every day and take care of the things that I need to there, mm-hmm. she takes care of home. Yeah. You know? there, there's, she's got power. And she, yeah. you know, she's the only person I can't say no to. There you go. You know, hey. There you go. So y'all heard it here first, man. <laughs> it's the Hot Seat Podcast. Always talking to hot guests, hot topics. Man, speaking of hot topics, man, I can't wrap it up that quick. All right, what's the hottest topics that's been talked about in your shop right now? Ooh. Just, gonna, just, give, me, just give me one or two things. We're going to go over them real fast, and then course, we're going to wrap this thing up. Of course, of course it's, it's, it's always, you know, the LeBron James, the, you know, the is he the goat thing? Is, is, is always, it's always a, a number one. Okay. Um, Your opinion? I'm a Jordan fan. My man. Welcome I'm to the Jordan show, man. Fan. Welcome to the no, show. No, no. We're going to end that part right there. What's the <laughs> next topic? You did good on that one. <laughs> you did good. Um, let's see. Ooh, we talk about stocks. We talk about stocks quite a bit. Okay. But, but I'm, I'm... Any tips you want to throw out there to us? Listen, uh, we'll be back with the finance class next time. Next time, buy into something. Buy into something. Buy into something. Okay. Buy into something. Okay. Do a Y'all heard it here first. Do a buy research. into something. Buy into something. You, Stock you got, tip today. Do, buy into something. Into something. 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 Do you read buy it? into something? something. You just, just get something. Get like something. buy into something. Buy into something. That's all you got to do. It, it buy might, into something. It, it might go up. You taking a chance no matter what. It's another episode of the Hot taking Seat a Podcast. Man, buy into <laughs> something. I'm with my man Donnell, aka D the Barber, man. Yes, sir. Uh, we dropping some of them bloopers too, just to let hey, you know. All right. It's all uh, anyway, it's man, all thanks for tuning in, man. If you like this show, if you <laughs> felt like it was helpful or useful or positive in any form, shape, or fashion, man, make sure y'all smash that subscribe button or whatever they say on YouTube, hey. right? A hey, like, share, comment, man. Again, it's the Hot Seat Podcast. I'm your host, Trees Trims, and I'm with my man. Donnell, uh, owner and founder of Kingdom, Kingdom Cuts. Cuts, man. Thank I you for tuning you in. Having. Yes, sir. Thanks for being here. And I appreciate the hoodie, too, man. Yes, sir. Yay! Peace. Peace.